division of labor? Do you want to do the usual division of labor? Is someone speaking? I can't hear anybody. Earth, Earth to bo the Booker. Earth. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, Booker. No? No. Oh. Hmm. I can hear. Yeah. But but the point is, Booker, if Booker can hear us. It Hmm. Let's wait a little bit to see if um strange. Booker. Mercury and retrograde is back at it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, restart a computer is the best way to try to fix it. Yeah. Booker, one, two. Can you hear? No, not yet. Send him a private chat. Yeah, will do. Um, what about sending out and back? Yeah, he's trying. Yeah, he's going to um, go in. Mm -hmm. So let's. We're gonna wait for Booker to come back, and we're gonna start the meeting. Booker, can you hear it now? Booker, is it better now? Can you hear me? I can now. Perfect. Oh, great. Yeah, I couldn't hear anybody for a while. Glad to have you back. So we're going to start the meeting. Uh, we're already recording. This is in our Hampton Pollution Review Commission. Alternatives to Policing Subcommittee, February 17, 2021. This meeting is going to run from 7 to 8.30. This is a remote meeting. It is being recorded right now. Uh, Noah, can you do the call to order? Yes. Uh, where's my, um, Booker? Here. Javier. Here. Alex. Here. And Carol. Here. And, and Chris. Oh my gosh. And Chris. <laughs> Excellent. So we have four. Um, and we got, uh, the minutes from last, um, meeting, right? Everybody was able to take a look to it. We got those today. They're really short, really simple. Carol, Alex, we're good to approve minutes. Excellent. Um, do I have to ask for a motion to approve minutes or just vote? I move we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Anybody? Second? Okay. No? Here. Uh, Flicker? Yes. Javier? Yes. Alex? Yes. Carol? Yes. And Chris. Excellent. Um, excellent. So we'll approve the minutes. So we're going to move to uh, agenda item number two, which is public comment. People are going to have three minutes to do public comment. Booker, as usual, is going to time that and we'll let you know when you're closer to the ending of your time. 
for you to be able to finish your thoughts. Uh, feel free to use the raise hand feature. And if you have the latest version, the newest version of Zoom, it's in the reaction uh, section down in your screen. Uh, when you are going to start your public comment, please state your name and your address. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go with the first person who is calling user two. Hildegard Friedman, 35 Fruit Street, Northampton, Public Housing. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm going to give you an additional specific dead person who died approximately five years ago in Building B or immediately outside of Building B. I have different opinions of the people living here. I was not here yet. I was at Fort Sander. Bobby Wiseman was living in Velia Franciscan's apartment, which is apartment B, that's B as in Bob, B31, and was found dead either in the hall or immediately outside the front door. I have construed or misconstrued, I can't tell you which, whether they carried the body out or just had the report of the police that he was outside the front door dead. He was someone that the police knew who had been in person who had overdosed. He was living in that apartment, both with Velia Franciscan, a disabled person, who I became involved with a couple of years ago when I first landed here, and I was reporting to the DA's office and had three case numbers that she was abused. Uh, Alan Tautznick, who then went to jail, uh, was put in jail, was also living there, the two men and one woman. And he was dead. He was found dead. Okay? If you need more information, you will tell me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hildegard. Um, I'm still uncertain if, because we have another hand raised by somebody with uh, saying call in user 2. I'm not sure if it's a different person. Booker, do you remember uh, what people need to press if they're calling in? I, from I think it's... I think it is. I star nine. Ah, there you are. There you star are. six. Star six, maybe? No, no, they, they just so, did it. Okay. This is Jane Doe. I called in on the 11th regarding the rape I reported and the positive I experience I had with the department. And having since then reviewed some of your findings in the draft in the domestic violence section, I really want to talk about they're sort of lacking historical context and data on the percentages of victims both in the Commonwealth and they exclude victims testimony in our jurisdiction. Also absent is information about the Victim Rights Law Center in Boston, which is a leader in this area. The section really seeks to mitigate consequences for the batterer. It's pro abuser, pro rapist and pro-criminal. It is against the police who bring sex offenders to justice. It contains no information about the psychology of serial child abusers, no information on sex trafficking, nothing about online predators. It's focused on helping abusers. Only 2% of rapists go to jail. 100% of the commissioners should have a problem with that. There's no peer-reviewed data, no citations 
it is really focused on the abuser and there's no comments from victim witness advocates. There's talk of creating supportive environments for batterers and rapists, which is re-traumatizing for victims such as myself. Restorative dialogue doesn't work with predators, child molesters, rapists, and batterers. The police de-escalate incidents. They stop the batterer. They do not escalate. They stop the crime. They stop the beatings. When the Commonwealth passed the Abuse Prevention Act in 1978, this state was a leader. We were among the first to do so. We've been protecting victims since then. If a batterer wants to commit a crime and abuse someone, they should be brought to justice. Fact, the killer in almost one third of female homicides is an intimate partner. 22% of officer line of duty deaths occur while responding to domestic violence calls. Police officers are killed in the line of duty on traffic stops, serving pr protection orders, and serving warrants to batterers. Our police and our department are highly skilled in this area. You note in this report, minimal training, vague and confusing procedures and websites, and a lack of transparency. And that that's why our department is not suited to provide sexual assault service. This is false. It is not my lived experience. The services I had were superior. I was interviewed in a private room, the interrogation happens in the court by the public defenders that represent the offender. Later, the cross-examination is re-traumatizing, not the initial reporting to the police. So, also pardon me. so, pardon me, your three minutes are up, though your comments are extraordinarily important. Excuse um, can me, you... I need to tell, you know what, I have to say something. I listened to every single one of your hearings, and I listened to Dan allow the abolitionists to go on and on and on and on. And I have it on record. That's disparate treatment. I have something to say and I don't wanna be silenced. I was silenced the other night. It's not okay. I'm a victim. You are charged with investigating the police in Northampton. That means looking at experiences of victims, not letting the abolitionists go on. It's not okay. It's favoritism, it's biased. I wanna finish my statements. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, again. sorry, I'm gonna stop uh, for a second. I would like to ask the re the other commissioners, should we offer this individual more time? I, I would like to hear the rest of the statement. Is, is that, and another thing is, I want to say that I, I'm sorry. I just I just want to hear from the other people before we decide. Can I also hear how much longer we should give this individual for their statement? Another two minutes. Okay. Does everybody else agree with that? Yes. Yes. And and just just to be clear, when when we're talking about public comment, everybody since the beginning of the commission has been three minutes. The, it, in, it, the extension or not extension has been to just to run up a thought that has not go way longer than the three minutes, just to clarify. So please, um, caller, go, you have now you have an additional two minutes. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Our police are highly skilled in this area. They are trained. You say they have minimal training and vague and confusing procedures. They are specifically trained, very trained. Also is absent in this section is anything about the sex offender profile and the local registration that the department manages. There are sex offenders in Northampton. Do you know where the sex offenders are on your street? Do you know how close to your children these people are? You need to investigate this. There's nothing about this in this section in this preliminary report. Our police are highly, highly skilled in responding to domestic violence and rape crimes. They approach in a certain way, they observe, they listen, they manage you on a multitude of fronts. They manage everything that's going on. They're looking for arrest warrants, prior history, looking for firearms, trying to see if they do risk assessments. The other thing is the minutes, there are 25 sets of minutes that are not publicly available. 
from this commission right now on the city council website. That's the problem. Maybe that's Noah's issue. It's a real problem. It's not transparent. You can't have certain people being allowed to go on and on and on and not allowing anyone else to go on. The only publicly available minutes are the 26th and the 27th. 26 other sets of minutes are not public. That's a problem. You were supposed to have protocols for securing anonymous private testimony. You don't. Victims of rape and domestic violence need to be able to call and they need to be protected. The other night, Dan read the whole phone number of someone that called in. That's a violation. That's illegal. That's personally identifying information. Victims are part of policing. You have to listen to us as well. You can't just pull sources out of 20 year old text and do I'm offender. sorry, your additional two minutes are now over with. I appreciate- I'm really sorry too. I'm so sorry too. I'm really sorry too. So um, we're gonna end your comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we're gonna keep going. Um, Joycey. Rosales. Hey, hey, commissioners. Uh, I just came to you know check out the uh, the thing, seeing that your open minutes are still here, and I just want to personally reach out to that previous caller. If you want to speak privately with me as uh, as one of the, kind of, I think they left, uh, but I just want to extend out that if they wanted to meet privately and talk about their experiences to give me more perspective, that that'd be great. That's all I wanted to throw out. Yeah, and, and I also want to clarify, and Dan wrote, and, and so every single person here in, during public comment has been given a fair treatment of three minutes. And as I said, and I want to restate, uh, any sort of extension has not been a real extension, but for people to write, uh, wrap up their thoughts. Uh, and in particular, in the case of uh, the NAN group, they were presenting to the commission, as many other people has been presenting to the commission. Also, uh, the outreach subcommittee now has on, and on now is available online. And no, is that correct? The uh, online survey where people can add testimony, uh, anonymous testimony. So that's up. Um, just, I just want to clarify that. Um, excellent. So nobody else for public comment okay cool so we're gonna move with our agenda um i'm gonna so i got communication oh no there is one more person hold on i'm not moving uh next person pimps low uh state your name if you feel comfortable in your word i'm gonna ask you to unmute Uh, you can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, uh, Pip Winslow, Ward 3, Northampton. Thank you so much. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, Mike Quinlan yesterday morning was interviewed on WHMP. And he said that uh, there's no record of uh, Northampton Police Department have having fired their weapon at a person, which I, I thought was... In, important. Um, I don't know so far in monitoring and watching the commission um, and listening, I don't know of any incident that you're reviewing of police misconduct or police abuse. And I'm talking about Northampton police. I'm not talking about Boston or Chicago or Atlanta. We're talking about Northampton and how they conduct themselves. And I'm trying to figure out what you are reviewing. Are you reviewing the conduct of the Northampton police? And that is a question that's open to all of you. Like misconduct, you know, past misconduct, either yesterday or a year ago. Are you reviewing misconduct by the Northampton police. And if, if you are, what are those specific incidences that have been documented 
brought to court. This is important because the Northampton police, as I have seen over many years, have been very careful with civilians. I've not ever seen personally abuse and misconduct. So I'm trying to decide and determine what you're doing. I, I can't, I'm trying to find, and I'm trying to also, I've been on Westlaw and I've been doing a lot of research to find Northampton police abuse and misconduct. And I'm so, I'm, I, I'm not coming up with anything. So I, I, we need that documentation. We need that information. We need those statistics by the Northampton police. We need to know what misconduct you're reviewing of the Northampton police. And, 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 and when Michael Quinlan said a, a firearm has never been discharged by the Northampton police department, at least documented at a person, that's extraordinary statistic. They've been around since I think 1884, is that right? Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, Wait, we've just gotten to three minutes. Right. Um, do you need additional time to finish your thought? I, that's my question. What misconduct and abuse are you reviewing? What conduct, what bad behavior of the Northampton police our police department, not the Boston Police Department or the Springfield Police Department, our police department. What abuse are you reviewing right now? I don't understand. I understand the reaction of Black Lives Matter across the country. There is certainly police abuse in other jurisdictions in New York, in Seattle, in Portland, Chicago, Atlanta. You know. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off, but I will. In the report that we filed before, um, and I'm the person who wrote it, um, if you look at on the Northampton Police website, how often do they use force um, without using a firearm? How often do they use force? They use force at a rate of 17% with black people um, and much, and that's the large, that's a much, they use way more force. I'm sorry, let me say this differently. Two percent of people in Northampton are black. Seventeen percent of the times that force was used in arrests was against black people. So that's wow. a difference. Okay. Um, and it's not clear to really. And by the way, this committee has not been looking at improper actions by the Northampton police. That's actually being done in the other committees. I think what this committee is more and more concerned about have been, um, what's the nature of interactions been with people, for instance, in mental health calls or domestic violence calls or other kinds of calls. Thank you. And Carol? Uh, hold on, it's, it's, I, I appreciate the comment. Carol, you can answer to that comment, but after you, we're gonna be done with, with the, with, uh, comment okay okay uh here's my comment um yeah again underscore what booker said that this committee has but been much more focused on uh instead of digging up data on the worst of the worst instances of behavior police behavior we have been looking at um the lack of imagination and um broader understanding of public safety that in some instances involves police and in some instances we would probably argue do not really uh, require police. And so we're looking forward to um, engaging other members of the community in uh, the exercise of public safety, I would say. And, and those are some of the alternatives we've been examining rather than looking at the bad apples. So with that, we are done with public comment. We're going to move to the next item in the agenda. And I'm going to take that one before giving back the chair to Booker, because I got communication today from Nelquit that they were not going to be able to come today to do a presentation. So 
Um, we tried to figure it out with Booker. What would be? What would we talk instead of it? Uh, Booker, any thoughts? So, um, I I think we're open to. I I. By the way, I feel that we need to talk about how we would like to format writing. Beginning to think about how we want to write what we're going to be writing for our final, um, our contribution to the report that's going to occur and how that might be done. I actually spent today reading the Brattleboro report um, in detail, um, looking for ways to think about how we might write our report. Carol has also shared with us her comments, um, her thoughts about, um, what we should do in terms of formatting our report for the final report. Um, and I, I'm going to propose that that might be what we talk about here today. Um, the other possibilities are our own responses to what went on with the discussions about the consensus building documents and whether that has an impact on our writing. So. If it's okay with you, I'm going to propose all, all of those things. And if you have other suggestions of what we might do here, I'm really open. And again, I'm sorry that this is um, that what we thought we were going to be doing here isn't happening. Uh, how, should I give everybody 20 or 30 seconds to think before we start talking? Alex, thank you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I also um, shared a kind of rough timeline uh, I ideas. Um, so that's, I, you know, I've worked on that a little bit more, but um, I would appreciate any, if that would be a, another possibility to um, uh, spend a little time on that and hear feedback. Thank you for reminding us, me about that. Thank you. That's another document. We have lots of recommend, really <laughs> good recommendations about how we should go from here. Yeah, I, th I think what's important, and this reminds me of the document that Cynthia and Dan created, right, which also flags different milestones and sort of make more visible the amount of meetings that we're going to have before the, the, the final report is due. So I think I think it would be good for us to take a look to the timeline that Alex is talking about and to see where we are um, because it's something that we're going to have to do sooner than later. And, and, pro and probably I'm, my guess is that taking a look now is going to inform better how we approach the writing process. Carol, do you have thoughts? I agree with that. Can we uh, screen share any of this? Um, Alex, would you be willing to pull up your document, your timeline like document? See that. Yes. Hang on. Okay. Um, maybe the best. It way do you want me to screen share or just share it as a... um hmm. let's start with a screen share and um we may need to do it differently afterwards okay um so do i have permission to do that yes Okay, can you see that? Yes, thank you. Uh, great, so I'm trying to break these out in terms of what our recommendations might be, um, you know, for the, the coming fiscal year. Um, and um, I also included a few um, things that are not as part of, not strictly alternatives, um, but, um, that, that have been mentioned, but I really would leave that to the other committees to make those recommendations. Um, and um, the key part here is as one that, you know, we've heard, heard a lot, which is to establish a department um, 
and I've included some quotes from, I think, the article that um, Cynthia sent um, <laughs> that, that gave examples from a number of areas around the country that have established an Office of Neighborhood Safety. Um, <clears throat> included also the, you know, the ongoing work of the Resilience Hub uh, that, that is planned already, um, but that would make sense that, that this department or office or however it may, might be organized um, <clears throat> would make sense for that to be under their uh, jurisdiction as well. Um, Alex, is it okay if we discuss this initial part a little bit? Sure. Do others have thoughts about this? I find that initial part very helpful. Uh, it does seem to reflect um, w where I think we do have some consensus. And it emphasizes a phasing in, which I think um, was important and came up the other night, last night, that we isn't gonna happen overnight. Javier, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I like the starting paragraph of it, right? I think it sort of describes really well what we had been talking about for for a read a couple of months. Um, I I would, you know, I mean, with the first point with the community service department slash all the different names plus all the way to the bullet points in the black bullet points i i think it's pretty good i like the the, the section about accountable to those they served for me that's that's essential for this to be to work uh because the kind of decisions that the things that need to happen um are people who are being affected are the one with experience and in, and so far the season that we have people who are being benefited of the season and all the only ones who are being happy so i like that um i have a, a, a comment but that's a different subject about better police complaint systems uh which is in i find interesting it's something that we haven't talked a little bit because maybe it doesn't really overlap with what we, this subcommittee is doing but I think it would be interesting to talk a little bit about it. Do we all, um, pardon me, I'm gonna, do we all agree that we need to be coming up with a something, it, I don't know what the name is yet, a community services department, a safety department, an office of neighborhood safety at some point. Is that something we all share as we see this as what the solution is going to be? Part of the uh, part, pardon me, path towards a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex. Um, yeah, I mean, basically looking at the you know the, the first quote there you know an office of neighborhood safety gives cities a way to embed community based safety solutions. Mm -hmm into the fabric of government while still maintaining necessary distance between interventions and the justice system. Um, and and the, the issue of, of continual funding, it seems like an office or a department is, is, has, has the most level of, uh, as opposed to say, you know, you get a grant for something and it lasts as long as the grant, but when you have, when you have consistent funding, um, then that that is something that will carry forward, uh, and I'm not sure. If also, people know the the sorry the credible messengers quote is I should probably explain that quite a bit more. But um, from that article, uh, people with lived experience of the carceral system of with or the you know peer peers in whatever area. Uh, are much more credible to reach uh, the people that um, you're trying to, to reach in those in those crisis scenarios or non-crisis scenarios. 
So is it safe for me to assume that we're all have all bought on to that we have consensus that this is going to be part of the path towards what we're going to recommend? As, as I said, <laughs> as I said, I'm fine all the way from community service department to all the way to accountable of those they served. The next line, I, I feel tra really troublesome for me based in the, you know, dozens of conversations that we had had in relationship to training. So, um, um, I'm coming to this meeting. I had quick dinner, but Human Rights Commission um, meeting went on before that. And I actually um, brought up these ideas within the Human Rights Commission as a way of thinking about this. And there's a general agreement that there are members of the Human Rights Commission who are also on the housing committees and other committees for the city. And I, I have to say, there's a shared view that this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, the issues are, where is this committee? Is it city or nonprofit or where is it? Has that come up in your thinking, Alex, or what you're hearing, how this is being thought about? Sorry, committee? You mean the, the potential department? Mm -hmm. what, so where is this department? Um, I think is it, it, is it is it a city department? Is yes. it a okay? So whether it's its own department or whether it's an office of a particular another department is still something so, I don't know that we've talked fully about. Although the rec the recommendations I've heard uh, are. Um, that it would be that that having it be its own department would give it the most autonomy. Okay. I mean, certainly, I strongly feel that this should be a city department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I I feel that way too. Yeah, I mean, in my reading, there there are obviously different models, but I I think my reading suggests that. Um, it's going to have the most clout and the, the most sustainability if it's within the city somewhere. Um, although that is with the proviso that it is staffed um, at least partially by people with lived experience, the people most affected. And that has to be a concerted effort to staff that way. So as we write a report a report of recommendations. And I'm stealing this a little bit from the Brattleboro report. Um, they also talk about a phased response and say, here are the things that should happen in the first four months and here are the things that should happen in the next year. Are we writing a report? We're writing the report to the city council with a recommendation, perhaps that we're setting up such a department and we are advising that department. Here's what the department should look like and here are what it should be focusing on? I'm asking these questions because this might focus how we write what we do. Well, based on our conversations, I think that would make sense, right? I mean, we identify really highly specific situations that somebody highly trained without a gun should be the one responding. We can certainly, we, we don't have to, we're not technocrats, so we don't have to come out with the step-by-step -step how this is going to be created under which articles and blah, 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 right? We don't need that. But certainly the report has to point out these are all the identifying situations that we have come down that should fall into the jurisdiction of this department. This is the constitution that we think the department should have hand to hand with the kind of corresponding peer led, uh, you know, professional that needs to have. And the other, th and I'm saying all this because I think the third part is really important, which is 
the I I would push strongly for reporting and transparency uh, foundations to be recommended for this uh, department, including uh, community wide meetings every couple of every uh, twice a year. I don't know. Um, and I, I think that's that's sort of necessary, but I, I see it like that. Alex, more thoughts? Um, those those sound good. What Javier said, appreciate that. Carol, more thoughts? Yes, yeah, I just wanted to pick up on uh, that last thought, Javier, that you uh, expressed about the community input, having having community meetings a couple of times a year to give in, input to the function and the, the focus of this this new department. And it reminds me of a, a clip of a video I watched today. Uh, we got from uh, Ya Ping a bunch of links uh, to videos which um, we could watch, which were very nicely organized so that we didn't have to watch an hour after an hour and after an hour. She really um, bracketed the uh, the moments on the on the videos that were were she thought relevant. Um, and there was one that had Andrea Ritchie on the on the video talking about um, how when we when we're doing this any degree of defunding it's important not to think of this as a dichotomy like you either fund the police fully or you cut the police fully back at a certain percentage and that the dichotomy isn't just between uh, funding you know some residual funding for the police department or or funding social services that have been impoverished for years that there's this third rail that she described, which I think is very important, which is engagement. If we really are concerned about public safety and safety for in, all individuals in the community, no matter who the residents are, you know, we need to have community engagement. That you know, that's a third piece. And you know, I when I think about our making recommendations, this com the subcommittee and the, the whole commission. I realize there's no matter what we recommend, there's going to be some segments of the community who will push back, find find it uh, uh, our recommendations offensive and so forth. And so I see um, a large and important piece of work around this document and going forward after the document in engaging different segments of the community um, in 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 getting serious about creating our safety together. Um, so I like the idea just to summarize that one piece of this is if there's a new agency set up or office somewhere in the city, that it really isn't just one of these inaccessible city departments, it's got to have input regularly from the community because that will keep things fresh and alive and responsive. And it's going to be complicated, right? Of course, <laughs> yes. That because, goes, be yes. Because you have, uh, because, you know, you have the narrative uh, that and I have I was I have said this in most of the meetings. You have one narrative, which is this system has worked for me. Right. I don't see any trouble. I have never had any trouble. Um, and assuming that reality extrapolates to everybody else, right? That we need to get into uh, dramatic, excessive, uh, extreme to be able to act, which is which is not the point. And, and, and I think that's, that's complicated, right? Because we're talking, sometimes we have talked so much about white supremacism uh, and we have talked so much about systemic issues in the system it, and the, in the, the, poli the police, policing itself as a system and then the Hanton Police Department being embedded in that system, right? Um, that for me, is, uh, the, the community input to that department is gonna be sort of difficult to navigate because the reality is that 
community input, when I mean community input, it's what I was calling before in a couple of meetings ago, the a feedback loop. You want to know those communities that you're serving if you're doing it right. You don't want to infantilize or you don't, you don't want to patronize those communities. That's when I mean what community uh, forums, right? Um, I value everybody's point of view. I, even though I prefer that most in opinions, I see analysis of situations. Um, but, but the reality is that for a, for, for a department like this one to function with a feedback loop has those, that communication has to happen deeply with affected communities. And I want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important if it's a, it's a citywide conversation, but the department should be guided by those who are in need of those services and for those who are affected. Not, not, not for others that they don't have lived experience. And, and, you know, we have heard a lot about that. Um, I'm, I'm going to wait to Alex, why don't you go ahead with, I was watching you edit what was up. Um, for the sake of discussion, can we go a little bit further down your timeline, Alex, just so that we can see what's there? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, these other things, um, I think are not like this one, the, they're not actually, a about alternatives. Yeah. And so I, I just, I don't even think they're, they, they were just ideas that were um, running in my mind. Percolating. There, yeah. um, part Liders. of this yeah. section. So I would, I would remove them. That uh, would be this one as well. Well, what I was about to, um, in my, I'm trying to control my controlling self. Um, sh um, which of these things sh should we be focusing on as an alternatives committee that we know that the other committees won't be commenting on? And quote, things that we really feel strongly have to be part of this. So for instance, I think Javier would guide us to say, here's who needs to be on such a commission. Um, for lack of a better, here's who needs to be in that, the room of that organization. Um, here's the accountability things that we want to have. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm really trying to um, focus on is what things should we as our alternatives committee be focusing on within this particular discussion? With the caveat that I'm not sure that the other committees will necessarily fill in the other blanks, but I, I just feel like what should we focus on as we run down this process? I, I would say, again, restating that we're not technocrats, so all the money and, and all that kind of stuff is not coming from, but I would say looks like we're we are we we're married to the idea of the department if that's the case i think starting for a mission statement mm. it's it's a good idea and after that talking about the structure that we would like to see within that department mm. because we're not gonna go through a, here we're not gonna do a budget here we are not gonna say we, we we cannot we're not I don't know how much money they would need to be paid, but I would but I do know that people should be paid. Ideally, this would be people that lives in Northampton, 
and they should be able to pay a salary accordingly to be able to live in Northampton. When you, <laughs> when, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, because the reality is that one of the main problems that you have with cops is that they don't live in a community that they served. If, 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 if you, if, if community, affected communities react and collaborate with those that show up for them. And they show up asking questions and not telling them what to do. Ideally, in, 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 and I think we're invited to say that kind of, that, that specifically, mm -hmm. we think that people living in Northampton, when it's peer led, should be the ones also a priority to work in this kind of field. Is there, you care about your community, you care about the people in your community. And I think that that should also be part of this. Carol? What, uh, I just have a question. To what extent do um, current uh, police officers uh, reside in Northampton? Is it like 50-50 or more? more I, my impression was that most of the forts, current forts are, are locals, are they? I don't, the, I don't. I recall the chief um, talking about that the only requirement is there's a certain mileage distance that you must live within, and that's mm -hmm. that's how you can get here okay. a uh -huh. certain amount of time. Um, but the, I mean, that north, it, it's difficult to because of the high cost of living here. Right. Uh, if, if you insist upon that, uh, you're excluding um, a, a large group of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, but again, um, and uh, ask, ask for something bigger so you can get something, something, right? And I want to be really clear with that. Um, I don't think it's revolutionary or extremist to ask for fair pay <laughs> for people to be able to actually not have to live four or five in an apartment because if now they kind of live in town. I think we can, we can, we can, you know, if this is up to everybody, this is not my decision. So we're, everybody's going to decide. And in, in, in this subcommittee decide that that's not something that we want to go for. I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm going to suggest it's not what we're going to want to go. I, the community I lived in before I lived here was Wellesley, um, which is super precious. And, and there is no, not only could the police not afford to live there or the firemen, None of the teachers could teachers, live there. Yeah. Not nobody could live there, um, and um, so we sort of got used to this carrier trade of who came in. Now, frankly, since I've moved here, <clears throat> when I'm sitting talking with friends from Springfield, it's like Northampton and East Long Meadow and Long Meadow are sort of like the new Wellesley and Westons of the Valley. So I think we have some issues. I think of number of police actually don't live in Northampton. I think a number live in our surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I, but I think those are, those are important issues. I, yeah. I actually heard, yeah, yeah. I heard Jody sort of say, well, we could always call in help from other communities, but you might be surprised about what you hear, what happens when you bring in people from other communities, um, that there's a little bit less Anyway, but let's let's keep going with um, the larger forms of this discussion. Booker, can I? Yeah, of uh, course. Dan, can you? I I don't understand what you wrote. Can you state it uh, on audio? Can you say it? Yeah, sorry. Um, so we had already requested that information. Um, so the chief sent us only two out of sixty of the. Um, full-time officers in the in the Northampton Police Department so that I, I think they say full-time officers I assume that includes you know lieutenant sergeants the chief herself and maybe even some of the civilian officers but only uh two of them live in Northampton oh, two, wow. out of, two, two out of 60 two out of 60 wow that's um, amazing yeah the next uh the next closest one is um sorry, the largest one is East Hampton Mm -hmm. uh, where 13 live, Westfield is seven, and then Belchertown is six, and then the rest are a smattering of like one or two officers um, across a number of other towns. That's very helpful, Dan. Thanks. 
Thank you, Dan. No problem. I, I try to only move to communities that nobody can afford to live in. Um, I, I, that's, a, that's a really sort of facetious statement, but it's, um, um, actually what I've really done is I always live in communities where my patients can't live. And um, that was true in Boston and it's actually been true here. And I mean, I'm being just extraordinarily honest about that. Um, um, but I, it's part of the privilege and this, that, you know, it's the heart. It's what I've learned from being in this process of, as Javier keeps reminding us sort of how much privilege I have and how do I think about all of these other issues that we're actually talking about. Um, Dan, thank, I'm so glad you're here with us. Um, we're thinking about writing. Do you have <clears throat> advice for us about which of these aspects we might want to concentrate our writing skills on as opposed to other parts of the commission? Um, that's actually a really great question that uh, Cynthia and I, um, who's also in here, um, we're going to tackle um, at some point. Um, and likely this week, but we haven't yet. Um, my gut um, says that I think a lot of this, even though it's really difficult to do, might might be beneficial with like group writing um, or collaborative writing. So that I think one of the things that we're that we're missing from you know the initial uh, report, which is obvious, right, um, is like a unified voice. Um, in terms of at least like presenting what we're what we're recommending, you know, with a coherent narrative, and I think some of these things like we might be able to. I think it'll be good to combine like where policies and services exist and like their experience along with what the recommendations are to sort of give a what why <laughs> sort of you know what is our recommendation and why is our recommendation. Um, because I think that makes more sense than having all of the what in one place and then the why in another where it's disjointed. Um, so, I mean, I think really, I think everyone, <laughs> everyone's gonna have something to say about these. Um, when it comes to what um, the community, the department itself, um, I think that's the, you know, that will be the, the large sort of topic that we tackle um, in the next meeting. Um, and Cynthia and I already, we started a document, you just need to finish it up and then send it out, but it sort of goes through what would, you know, what would this, what would this, and it's a, it's a series of questions. It's not, um, you know, sort of, um, it's not our, our decision here, but um, to ask what, what do people imagine this department doing? What do they imagine it living? What are the functions that might be police related um, that, you know, it, there would be, you know, be taking those functions away from the police and moving to them, moving them to this thing, but also what are the other functions that this department would have? Um, I think this gets into sort of like setting up the scope that then, def you know, that then determines sort of what we're really recommending large scale, right? Like uh, if this is a community, uh, like a department of community care, um, it doesn't make sense to have, you know, maybe David's concern of traffic enforcement there. Um, but, you know, what does that leave us? Do we want to do something? Do, would we even want to recommend two departments? So we have one that's community care and then one that's um, like Berkeley that has a department of transportation um, that handles, you know, sort of road work and everything else. And then also, um, you know, the traffic enforcement, right? So, but if we called it the department of safety, then you could maybe make an argument that traffic, <laughs> you know, depending on how you're, you're putting safety, but also where it lives in the city too, uh, makes a difference. It might be a hard sell to say that the, you know, under the Board of Health or the Department of Health is gonna be this Department of Safety that also handles traffic. Um, if it was somehow it's magically own autonomous thing, then maybe that would work. Um, a little differently. So again, thinking about where that gets housed also affects sort of what we might imagine, um, which is a long-winded way to say, I don't have a great answer yet. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. 
and so Cynthia has her hand up and I would love to give her a chance to respond to you because my rambling, um, she can usually get a sentence in that makes it make sense. Cynthia, you, you're gonna make sense of this entire situation, please. What, what an introduction, but um, <laughs> now you people are making so much sense. Um, just wanna give you a little highlight from policies, procedures committee in relationship to this document. And also Dan's absolutely right. Um, we were thinking of, we know there is consensus within the commission about this department. So it's only fair to pose and probe a bit further some of these questions that Dan was referring to, which we sort of, we, we were outlining in a document, but um, policies and procedures, the infamous committee um, is in a mode of listing the functions that they've researched, um, just listing them. And our next meeting is gonna be, this goes into the department, this stays in the MPP, this goes into the department, doing that sort of cascading there. Um, so that's gonna be our contribution to what you are doing and maybe a couple of other, um, I mean, we're all talking about this department as being the placeholder. So um, I think it's gonna be great to have a, a commission-wide um, discussion on this, but you're starting at some really, really important points that are gonna be very, very valuable. I'd hate to have you do so much work and then we put it to the full commission to have a broader conversation when you've already done so much work. So, but that's, you know, that's how our process is working. So we'll, you know, um, we'll go from there. I don't know if that's helpful or not. That's, um, everything you say is helpful, Cynthia. Carol. Yeah, can I ask a really concrete, I wanna ask a really concrete question of um, Anne and Cynthia. Is it fair to say that there's been um, some, some degree of attention given to the complaints, the current complaint system and, um, uh, and, and, and then also what about the um, civilian flaggers? I mean, have those topics, I, I'm just trying to figure a way to narrow our focus here on alternatives and blend it in with what other subcommittees are doing. So I don't know how much attention has been given to those areas. If I can just, Dan, is it okay if I just uh, talk about policies right now? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, be per perfectly frank with you, the complaint issue, um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's many of us who feel pretty strongly about it. There's a, maybe a person or two that wants to keep it up in the air um, and, and by that, what I mean is that we feel that, okay, we've, we've identified there is a system, mm -hmm. but let's not talk about how it can be better or let's fix it or whatever. There is a system and that's what we're reporting out. And I think if we put, some of us think if we put too much energy in fixing that, which is something that's inherently broken, um, that might not take us you know, on a path that we want to go to, but we're still working that out amongst the people in the subcommittee. So it's being discussed. I think, I think we're kind of at a point now where we're going to say, there is a system. There are some people in the subcommittee, I'll be frank with you, that think it's a great system. And there's some of us, I'm on that side, that think it's a pretty crappy system. But we're, we're moving through that. We're bringing people along. Um, in terms of the flagging thing, we've, we've um, certainly have talked about that and, um, and traffic traffic enforcement and traffic stopping, et cetera. Um, but we're hoping to flush that out a bit more on Monday night. So that's kind of where we stand with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Javier. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's really, this, this. I love to see other commissioners in, in these meetings because I think we get so much input. Um, so I'm, I really appreciate Cynthia, Dan, and JC. I appreciate you here too, just just in case. Um, uh, I I I like a lot of this document, but I I have to say. Um, so better police complaint system. I don't think that belongs to this document. I mean, this you can make an aside to propose specifically a different system where police is not policing themselves, right? We can talk. We can talk about the ups and down or a, or a civilian review commission, 
uh, in in from the point of view of of oversight of the police, which is something that other localities are are talking about, right? And the then the other is. And and Alex, I, this is a question for you. Do you still think that trainings work? Um. <laughs> Booker, not uh, I'm sorry uh, that edit out that uh, laugh that I smirky laugh I'm pretty clear that the anti-bias trainings don't work um I I my comment and I spoke to this a little bit yesterday was there will continue to be trainings for the police mm -hmm. and um if there are ones that are more effective uh it would be worth recommending those but perhaps that's just not something we want to engage in at all um yeah and that that's fine i i understand that it's, it's not something i've i've researched but i know there are community members and others who who have looked into particular ones that may show promise yeah um, i mean i i know i know for example that probably you're mentioning the able program right that came out from the epic program which is pretty much and 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 in some point we're gonna to need to talk about that. I know that Dan mentioned that that system, which is brand new. There is no real data. There 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 is an interesting interview in NPR about the able programs with a, with a police officer saying, I don't really know if it worked. The the numbers are a little down, but having in mind that that police department had a terrible story of abuse, maybe it's the and and the and the police officer says uh, the police the person giving the statement says. Maybe it's because they implement the body war cameras. We don't know. So, so we need to be careful with this. And 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 I think when we're talking about, so for example, Alex, you said I don't think. Uh, anti if, correct me if, if I'm if I'm wrong on it, but you said that you do think that anti bias training doesn't work, right? Correct. Okay. So, anti bias training has been thought as the as the baseline of police misconduct and relationship to racial issues. Mm -hmm. And that's the way how they have been addressing that. Right? So when we're talking what 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 the commission is talking about, it's inherently trainings in relationship to racial and social issues. So when we're talking about and, and I think that's the reason why I think we agree totally on this, Alex. I think we, we were thinking it in a different way. I do think that we agree that those trainings meant to retrain pervasive behaviors from police officers in relation to social and racial issues are not working. We agree on that, right? Um, and I and will and and I think we also agree that the police department has been practically going forward with whatever. Uh, um, you know, uh, program they find. In fact, they, they are doing the restorative justice approach in tandem with other police departments, including East Hampton, right? Mm -hmm. We brought those issues and, the, and the, the answer from the police chief was, it was the one that we knew about it, right? Was the one that we knew about it. So even to, to went as far to say, if you know about something else, let me know. Um, so, so I think that that we do agree that those trainings that has been historically implemented to tackle bias have never worked. And I think that, and, and I think that this is a moment when we need to build a connection between why they don't work, and they don't work because you know we we heard we 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 had a presentation about why they didn't work yesterday, but it's because this is systemic, right? Sorry, Javier. Um, I just want to say I, I think you are absolutely right that this is not something we that should be in this document, and I don't think we should be talking about this in an alternatives meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't. I mean, I, I think it's an important discussion to have, but I would suggest that we simply remove it and um, focus on the things that are about alternatives. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. only that you know I I get. I wanted to contextualize because you know we have been hearing all this about training but i think that when we talk about training we need to be conscious that we're talking about the historically training that has been done for years and years and decades 
to try to combat racial and social injustices that is, has not worked and will not work? Um, since we're, while we're editing, um, um, reducing firearms at community events, to me, that's outside of the realm of alternatives. Um, more like policy and procedure. Yeah. And by the way, my understanding is policy, their policy is thou shalt wear a weapon at all meetings. And it would take a real, it would take a rewrite of policies to change that. So, but again, that's, I think it's a little outside of our scope. Um, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, you know, th this is re was really just kind of a brainstorm. So, sure, that's, uh, that's, that's a I, uh, great but, start. But brainstorms yeah. are a great start and yeah. they guide us, um, but they also open up where other people disagree with you. So, uh, you know, that's okay. Um, and that, you know, by the way, and that Alex, you're, you've complimented me for being vulnerable and I'm gonna compliment you in the same way of putting your thoughts out there and allowing yourself to be vulnerable for how you think about things. So thank you. Um, are there other thoughts? So could we talk a little bit about, do we wanna, I also think civilian flaggers is it, outside. I was just gonna ask, I was gonna, just gonna ask if you could delete civilian flaggers, yeah. Um, well, I would say that is an alternative. It is uh, an alternative. An alternative that city policy could, in, you know, could institute, um, could say we want to engage, we're going to engage civil, civilian flaggers in areas where the state the, permits that. Um, so I, I would argue that it's, it is, it, it may belong here. Uh, it definitely, I, Alex, I actually agree. It definitely belongs here. Um, okay. My, my personal problem is this isn't where I want to put my energy. Mm -hmm. um, now, I guess we, the question is, is just because I, that's not where I want to put my energy, that doesn't mean it's not an alternative that shouldn't be on our list of things to do. Well, maybe we don't need to develop it the way we develop some other areas could mention it in passing because when you think about towns you've seen that use civilian flaggers it turns out to be a pretty good employer employment option for for women who might not have another job That's and um so you know maybe it should stay in there but not not be developed to the extent that we develop these other areas above the uh, mental health substance abuse homelessness what about um so so i just tried to prioritize in phase what in phase one the things that we had talked about the mm -hmm. most that that mm -hmm. seemed to rise to the top mm -hmm. um and the the um and also the things that kind of where we know the research is is pretty well developed that it's effective um for example in phase two the domestic violence area uh <clears throat> I, I feel like there's a lot more research that needs to be done there before we can make a recommendation. Um, so that's why I would, you know, putting it as something that, uh, you know, do that, basically say, look at, look more um, at, at possibilities. Uh, and then these, these other items as well down here, um, the traffic wellness checks, noise and nuisance complaints, um, that those aren't as, as highly on, on our list. And uh, so the, the, that's the um, sort of rationale in my brainstorm. But I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Mm -hmm. Carol, do you have thoughts? What are we focusing on? Um, let's make this be about what we think about Alex's thoughts of this secondary prioritization to these things that are in phase two, that they might oh, be okay. a longer phase. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd like to mention them. I'd like to mention uh, the importance of having the city move in concerted ways towards the adoption of more transformative justice programs. but. 
I don't know, when we say that, then we have to define it, I would think, what that means in phase two. Right, and I, I think also perhaps, you know, restorative justice programs that are, like the city, you know, has, has this program um, that is essentially for people who pre, before they are charged, but who <laughs> would be charged if they don't go into such a program. Um, but I think that there needs to be a restorative justice program that is completely outside of the police that that people can engage, um, even though they have not even necessarily, uh, you know, filed a criminal complaint or, uh, and so how it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, domestic violence related at all. Um, and, you know, domestic violence is the most controversial area of restorative transformative justice. So um, I almost think, you know, that this, this belongs, oops, this belongs. Yeah, uh, I, I agree part. with, I agree with what you just did, Alex. I think we ought to say we want to move towards restorative just transformative right. justice programs. And then if, if the issue is domestic violence. That's separate. Uh, but, it, but it could might enter that. Well, yeah. it's it's my belief, and somewhere in my pile of documents here, I think I I printed something that says in Massachusetts, that's not possible, it's not possible to refer, at least through the court system or the victim witness, uh, refer uh, cases for uh, RJ restorative justice processes that are DV cases. You know, I, I could be wrong, but I, I believe I read that. In so Car so yeah. Cynthia is posting in the chat that you're correct with what you just said, Carol. Okay, all right. Uh, right, so that, so once it's in the carceral system, it, it restorative justice cannot be used in Massachusetts. Um, uh, the D DV, only, DV only. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. For, yeah. for domestic violence. Right. Uh, but, but, you know, the argument is 50% of people never report because of the implications of what um, what can happen to their lives. And so having an option and emphasizing that it is an option, um, mm -hmm. not a requirement in any way, and it doesn't preclude any future involvement of, of criminal complaint. So if a, somebody is sitting in my patient care office who's between the age of 25 and 64 who's telling me that they're being abused by someone in, within their household could i refer them to a tr transformative justice program rather than saying call the police um, i was careful about saying what i said because i do not have to report people between 24 under and, the age under the age of 65 right yeah yeah that's elder, right. elder abuse you're required yeah as and, as as am i yeah and under 18 it's yeah. required under 18 also but i don't i am i do not have to re mm -hmm. report and so if i had a different program that i could refer that person to and say here call these people mm -hmm. um yeah. Yes, I would never. I, I want to speak as a clinician now, rather than mm -hmm. as a, just a commission member. I would never refer someone who is in in an active process of being abused to a restorative justice program. I would refer them to one of the um, survivor programs hmm. because there any in restorative justice. There's an assumption that all parties. They come together are on equal on equal power power have equal right. authority and power and that is not the case when someone is being victim currently being victimized yeah yeah in yeah. in a relationship yeah 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 javier yeah i two things i was going to point out what just carol said about the restorative justice as an equal ground exercise in a domestic violence, ongoing of domestic violence uh, situation doesn't apply. And also I would like to say that, I mean, and this is this is for people also in the audience that talk about the, the police department. I mean, in, 
based on what we had been talking about, not only in this meeting, but in previous meetings, let's say, Booker, you find that somebody who you are not by law uh, obliged to report tells you that. In our Hampton, hopefully, that person is going to receive from you or from it's, it's going to see around the hospital the number of the Department of Care and the reasons to call there. Yeah. Right. And the department and, and or not even or, or, or not or not that, but also is going to call all the number of the dispatcher. And we have been talking a lot about um, what we're doing here doesn't mean that somebody is going to call because they there is an intruder in the house and they're going to get a social working instead. No. And I want to be clear with that. Mm hmm. People who are calling the dispatcher, 911, the dispatcher would act accordingly to the situation. Because I think we we keep getting all these comments about almost as if we we are intentionally sort of uh, pervasively giving, giving something, uh, uh, taking away protection for a person that actually wants protection, right? Which is not the case. Ideally, in a situation like the one that Booker described, that person either would have trust and confidence to call the Department of Care, or that person would call the, the highly trained operators that were praised by Police Chief Casper, and that operator would uh, ju make the judgment what is needed. It, obviously, there is going to be a different call from the operator if it's imminent danger, or somebody who actually wants to talk with one of the organizations that Carol mentioned that mm -hmm. work with with people in this situation, right? I, I just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just say, Javier, it's really complicated, and um, there are a number of clinicians I work with that if they heard, "Oh, you're being hit by this person," I want you to call this number, and I'm going to call the police if you don't. And some dispatchers may also go there. Um, this is really complicated. And it's sort of more the discussion I do with somebody who's sitting with me saying, I have a lot of people who are in situations that they would prefer not to have anybody involved and they're staying in the situation. I think that's what Carol is speaking to too. And our jobs are trying to help them get there. And it's, it's all kinds of fears that are going on. So, um, but when I was reading the Brattleboro report, the stuff about domestic violence got the least clear. And uh, about, by the way, I spent a lot of time with the Brattleboro report because they're a community similar to ours. Um, and I was looking at their scope and how did they do things. And the domestic violence, it's still very much, um, it's what our person who spoke in public comment would say, it's a really dangerous situation. It's dangerous for everybody. And there's still a shared sense um, that someone with the possibility of force needs to be involved. Um, I've got to say, I was really sorry to read that. And, but that's where they are. And that's why I was hoping we were going to hear different things tonight um, about different ways of coping. I, I think, I don't think we have enough information to give clear, here's what we think should happen. I think we can give ideas about the menu of options of sort of there ought to be a dispatch response as Javier was saying, there ought to be places that people could call. Um, I'm not sure where we are with not having policing involved, especially with the legal issues involved, but you know, we'll have to see. But this is something for us to pursue. Are there other things that we think should be on this list of either phase one or phase two that we need to be careful about writing about for the rest of the commission. Uh, Booker, I just want to do a time check. Okay. Ooh. You have a minute and 15 seconds to come up with what I just asked. Let's, let's change my question. Um, how would we like to focus the next meeting in terms of the, because uh, we haven't talked about Carol's writing prompts about being more thoughtful about writing about why we are re recommending what we're going to recommend 
-hmm. along with this phased approach that Alex has put in. And perhaps that might be our agenda for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. By the way, thank you, Alex, for doing that open drafting with us. Appreciate thank you so much. I'm going to put it in the chat so uh, mm -hmm. you all can okay. copy this. Mm -hmm. Carol, do you have thoughts about? Yeah, just you were uh, referencing that little format that I, that, like the policy brief outline that was just, um, that I put out there as some way to begin to organize our thinking about writing. And I just want to say, even though I underscored and emboldened the word why, um, why we would want certain policy alternatives and bureaucratic changes in who does what, um, the why, I want to be clear what I'm saying about why. I, I don't think we just need to do a data dump of what other cities have done. You know, we may reference models in other cities, but uh, in my reflection, when I sort of getting dressed in the morning and walking the dog is that the why for me is increasingly the justification is because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> so I think we need to not just get hung up on loading a lot of data. I mean, we will have some data, some there, there is some not there is a knowledge out there about what works and doesn't work. I mean, this whole thing about anti bias training uh failing to uh keep people on the street safe from police uh, encounters um you know that's become data but um we don't have to keep going to to find why we're we're justifying policy alternatives i think it's the right way to go you know was that the uh the arc of history moves towards social justice let's be on that arc you know it bends towards justice. And I'm sorry, what did I say? Um, no, that's okay. Oops. We can. Yeah, we can. yeah it bends. It bends towards towards. Yeah. <laughs> towards. Yeah. Are there other thoughts about the focus of our? I I am gonna, even how nice how Carol has asked us to think about what she said. I I actually still think it's an important issue for what writing we should contribute to the larger commission report. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're again in the same advantageous position that we were before in mid commission process. And I say that because we find ourselves again with Alex and Carol <laughs> producing a document that is giving us extremely thoughtful, concrete and clear uh, a starting point. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel that I, I would feel comfortable taking a look to, to Alex's document, which is really good. And, and each of us come with, with comments to add to, 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 a sort of, you know, to a, to a draft and how, at least how sections should be in the different approach that we want. But I think uh, because of the, what, what the material that Alex wrote and, and Carol also chair, I think we're, we're in a pretty advantageous position to start talking and reflecting in those two documents. Last chance for thoughts before we mo um, entertain motions to adjourn. Alex, you look like you have something to say. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I mean, I think, yeah, getting that feedback, I mean, I'm always kind of wanting us to move forward in, in writing in more detail, the areas that we feel passionate about. Um, but maybe we're not ready for that yet. So, uh, thank you for saying that. I th I actually think that needed to be said. So I spent today reading the Brattleboro report, because I, I, frankly, I read it saying, could we just take out the word Brattleboro and put in the word Northampton and yeah, right. do that report? Um, there's some really big differences with their processes. 
than our process. Um, and um, I was actually underwhelmed by their recommendations at the end. So I guess I'm going to ask that if all of you have an extra three hours to read their 150 pages, you actually don't need to read the 150 pages, but just take a read and look at sort of what their recommendations were. Um, um, I, I'm being facetious now, but their first recommendations were the first thing that should happen for the first six months was that the police needed to, rec to recognize their, the harm that they had done and recognize the fact that they were part of a racist culture and a white supremacist culture, all of which is true, but I don't know how you measure whether they did that or not. <laughs> and and what, that, what did that mean? So I was, for such a well thought out report, I was really disappointed. And I don't want our, I don't want to have a report that just has Northampton put in for Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. um, what they're rich in is they've got lots of witness in their report. That's the strongest part of their report is the witness that they got. Um, and that's what drives their report. And we have that from our public meetings, but quite not with the richness that they have. And that's their strength. Uh, they're underwhelming in terms of data, I think. Um, so I, <clears throat> anyway, so our next meeting will be, um, unless we have other speakers that we are able to have come in, uh, will be about writing. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think what Alex just said about figuring out what our passions are and planning to add that passion to our writing is really important. Um, are there other thoughts before we adjourn? Yes, yes I'm, Carol. I'm just wondering whether we would be rescheduling Nelquit. I will look into that. Okay. But, and it's yeah. And and it also, by the way, it sounded like Dan was talking with the people from um, who we were, who I thought was going to be meeting with us, and it looks like that person might be getting scheduled for the larger commission meeting from 413, um, I'm forgetting the name. Yes, Alex. Uh, just note the note from Noah about the timing of the next meeting in the chat. Um, Noah, is that... Um, is that the same? We were, oh, there. that's for the 24th. I think we were proposing having an, our next meeting on the, no, I'm asking now because I don't have the dates in front of me. Were we planning on meeting on Wednesday, the, ooh, the same 24th? Yeah. Um, if we could avoid overlap, I would be so grateful. <laughs> I, think um, our, I think our meeting was going to be 7 till 8.30. Am I right about that? uh i don't think we set a set a time or that's okay. the I, I mean that's the time we have been meeting yeah what um, about what about 7 30. 7 30 to 8 or, or 7 30 to 8 30 or 7 30 to 9. 7 30 to 9. is that all right with everyone i would be fine with me mm -hmm. cool thank you and the Agenda for now is going to be about writing prompts. Um, though if we are able to arrange for speakers to be there, we will. Um, we will keep the same idea of um, guest speakers from the first 15, the, the initial part of the meeting based on who's there. Okay. Thank you, Noah. Yeah. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, I think Chairman Kennedy, it's raising his hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan, please. Yeah, um, just a quick clarification. So we invited both um, Cherry Sullivan and from Hampshire Hope and um, Jess Tilly from the HRH 41 yeah, HRH 413. Uh, but there would be real they, they would be really short presentations, like five minutes, like like really short on the present on presenting and like giving people a chance to ask some questions. Um, but 
I just wanted to throw out there, if, if you wanted a more really deep and rich conversation, um, I would say maybe meeting with the subcommittee would be, would be really beneficial too, just to have that space. Um, it's just that we don't have a lot of wiggle room in the larger meetings. Um, so just, just throwing it out there um, that it might still be worth an invite to really, to get into the weeds of what they do. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to have Tilly be at one of our meetings and it, it did, it came apart. Um, would you be interested? Um, she would be speaking about harm reduction. Is that something you would like to schedule for another meeting or would you like to have that, see if it's possible for her to be here for the 24th or would you prefer something else? I, I would appreciate having her coming to the to the subcommittee because I think that's something that we need to talk with somebody okay. who has been working on that. Okay. Other thoughts? Thank you, Dan. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move that we to adjourn. Second. Um, Noah, would you like to take a vote from people? Yeah, Booker. Yes. Javier. Yes. Alex. Yes. Carol. Yes. And Chris. Um, thank you all. And by the way, thank you, Cynthia and Dan, for being here with us. And by the way, thank you for the other um, members who have watched us throughout the entire meeting. And thank you for your public comment and your continued interest and uh, participation in our chat. Thank you so much. Yes, I also appreciate those videos and how bracketed they are. They've been an efficient way of getting the perspective. Thank you, guys, activists. Good night. Good night. Good night.